Hello and welcome to this section of the TI-89 Calculator Tutor and here we're going to learn how to find the inflection points of a function using the graphing capabilities here in the math menu. Um, let me go ahead and plot a function and then we'll talk about what an inflection point is so you'll understand what we're trying to actually use the calculator to do. Let's go ahead and, and plot sine of x. That's the easiest function to visualize. So let's go in uh, there and just to make it look a little better let's select zoom trig number seven and watch it plot the uh, sine function. Notice that sine goes up and down and up and down and up and down. So we have lots of peaks and lots of valleys and it happens over and over again. Um, when we talk about functions that have peaks like this that are kind of um, kind of rounded like this we call this part of the function we call it concave downward. Uh, because it's concave and it kind of opens up facing down. The open part of the cave, so to speak, is facing down. So when you study calculus, you'll talk about concave down parts of functions. And this is an example, and other examples over here, where we're concave opening downward. This guy is what we call concave opening upward, or concave upwards, because it's concave and it's opening facing up. So here we have a concave downward part of the function followed by a concave upward part of the function. So the bottom line is this function changes from concave cave down and it eventually begins to change to concave upward. Somewhere between these two places, here in the middle somewhere, is where the function transition occurs. In other words, it's going in a certain direction and then it bends over and begins to change to curve in the other way this exact point between these two regions where this exact transition happens is what we call an inflection point inflection point you can kind of think of the word inflection usually we use it when we talk about our voice where uh, someone is talking with great inflection where their voice makes a change you know maybe a narrator of a book he, he might use a great inflection in his voice he might say something like the great sun sets below the horizon where he's changing his voice constantly right or he makes a nice point by changing the pitch of his voice well this inflection point is where this uh, curve begins to change its shape it's changing from concave downward to concave upward and right here in the middle is the exact point where it bends over and begins to move the other direction now in calculus the way you find these inflection points is by taking the second derivative of this function and setting it equal to zero. And uh, derivative is something you learn how to do pretty early on in calculus. You take two of those derivatives, set it equal to zero, and then solve that little equation. And you're going to find that this point happens right here. And there's another one here, and there's another one here, and there's another one here. The calculator can do that for you. Just go to number eight, inflection. So what it's asking us for is the lower bound and the upper bound, just like it always does for these graphing functions. And what you need to do is find a lower bound, which just means any point to the left of this inflection point. So you, you do have to know what an inflection point is, and you do have to be able to say, oh, okay, it's roughly right around there where it bends over. So pick a point to the left, and pick a point to the right, and hit enter. It'll think for a second, and it'll calculate and put the cursor exactly at this inflection point, which is at x is equal to 3.14159. Now, does this number ring a bell? this uh, number is pi. So there's an inflection point at pi because that's a nice x-axis crossing where everything begins to bend over and go the other direction. And we can find another one of these guys. Let's do number eight. Uh, let's go find uh, you know the one over here. The lower bound needs to be a point to the left hand side of the inflection point. Any point we choose, we hit enter. We go on to the other side and we hit enter find that inflection point, it's going to put 0 comma 0. So basically it's finding the points that that we kind of know from the sine function are inflection points which just happen to line up with the points that we cross the x-axis because the sine function is is um, crossing the x-axis at the exact points that it bends over and goes the other direction so all of the inflection points are these points here which you should know from the sine function are you know 0, pi and so on all right, now let's go in here and choose a function that's a little bit more uh, less predictable, I guess I, sh I should say. So what we're going to do is put in for our function 3x cubed, 3 times x cubed, plus 2x squared, 2 times x squared, uh, minus 6x, minus 6 times x, 
um, minus 12x, 12x plus 3. And I could have combined terms here, but uh, you know I ended up finding a function that worked really well in the calculator, so I'm just going to leave it like this. So we'll put it in there, and we'll go in here and just take a first hack at what it looks like. Let's go into the zoom. Let's go to zoom standard, just because let's pretend we have no idea what this is going to look like. And let's see what the function looks like. So it's thinking for a second. And we'll find that it goes way off the screen, way off the screen the other direction, way off the screen the other direction. So obviously our scale is not quite right. The best way to handle this is to go into the zoom menu and go to, uh, actually before we do that, go into the window menu. So what we want to do first is put a nice region for x in here. And I'm going to go ahead and put negative 3 to 3 because I know that that happens to work well. So I'm going to constrain x to negative 3 and 3. And I'm going to select zoom fit which is this one down here and that's going to basically cause the calculator to um, use my x-axis values that I pick but it's going to pick an appropriate axis for y to make our function fill the screen really nicely so it's gonna make our inflection points a little bit more noticeable because it's going to be nice and and uh, fill the entire screen here so you see we're coming up this is concave downward right here this part of the graph here because it's concave like a cave and it's opening downward this part of the graph is concave upward because it's like a cave and it's opening upward. So somewhere between these two points, I have concave downward, concave upward, the graph bends over and then just begins to turn the other direction to go up again. Somewhere in here is an inflection point. The way you find it by hand is to find the second derivative of this function, set it equal to zero, solve for x, and you'll find that this value is whatever it is. But you can go in here to the math menu, number eight for inflection, and just give it a lower bound than an upper bound. Now I don't know where, where this inflection point is, but I know it's not this far over. So I hit enter. And I don't really know exactly where it is, but I know it's got to be somewhere between these two points. So I hit enter here, let it calculate, and it finds the exact inflection point x is equal to minus 0.22222, y is equal to 7.06. So this is the exact inflection point. So the reason I did this one is because for the sine function, everything was rhythmic and cyclical and everything crossed the x-axis at the inflection point. You can see that in general for, an, for a, 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 any old algebra function, the inflection point in general is not going to be where we cross the x-axis. It just depends on where the function is and how it looks. So you're not going to be able to predict ahead of time. So use your calculator function to find that. Um, you know, in a calculus test, you're going to be required to show your work. But the beauty of this calculator is being able to check your work, finding the inflection point, and then immediately knowing in your calculator if you get the answer right is, is huge because then you can go on to the next problem without wondering if you got the answer correct. And that actually can, can save you and give you so much more time for your other problems that uh, it'll be a huge asset. So learn how to use it, uh, especially if you're in a calculus class. It's something that uh, is very, very uh, important and, and is asked on almost every single uh, exam in Calculus 1. And even if you're in algebra from our short little lesson here, knowing what an inflection point is, I think it, it helps you understand a little bit more about functions and uh, knowing how to interact with them and knowing how to pick these special points out.